This video was produced by Virginia View, a consortium dedicated to promoting remote sensing outreach, education, and research through funding by the America View Consortium. This video was developed in partnership with the Virginia Geospatial Extension Program and GeoTED UAS. Its contents are solely the responsibility of the authors and do not necessarily represent the official views of America View, the USGS, or other partners. The mention of trade names or commercial products does not constitute their endorsement. In the previous chapter, a Landsat 8 scene dated June 14, 2016 was downloaded from the USGS image clearinghouse called Earth Explorer. This chapter provides information about the scene. We begin in Earth Explorer with the same image from Chapter 11. Recall how to access metadata about the scene using this button. On the left side of the table is the category of metadata, and on the right side is the metadata for the specific category to this Landsat scene. If you're unsure what the category means, click on the category name. Let's try clicking on Landsat Product Identifier. This link takes us to a web page describing the Landsat Product Identifier. This is the naming convention of each acquired scene based on acquisition and processing parameters. Each character associated with the LPI has meaning. From the metadata, let's examine our scene's product identifier. L stands for Landsat. C stands for OLI and TIERS. These are the sensors aboard Landsat 8. L1TP is Level 1 Precision and Terrain. 017 is the path and 034 is the row for this scene. 2016-06-14 is the date the scene was acquired, June 14, 2016. 2017-02-20 is the date the scene was last processed by the USGS. Note that this date can change as new processing methods are developed. 01 is the collection number, and T1 means it's a Tier 1 product. The next item in the metadata list is the Landsat Scene Identifier. This number can be used to order the scene again without having to complete a new search. This looks very similar to the product identifier. The major difference is the date of acquisition. In the Landsat Scene Identifier, the date of the image is expressed in Julian format. 2016-166 is the 166th day of the year 2016. After the date of acquisition are the characters LGN01. LGN is the ground station identifier, and 01 denotes the version of the scene. The next few lines of this metadata repeat information in the product and scene identifiers. Looking at the start time and stop time, this is the time that Landsat 8 acquired this particular scene on June 14, 2016. It's expressed in Greenwich Mean Time. Another useful element is the land and scene cloud cover. In this example, both are at point six six. A satellite image or any remotely sensed image must be referenced to the ground to identify specific features. The number of ground control points used for this scene is this number. Sun elevation and azimuth is important for areas above and below the equator. Remember, the sun's position changes with the season and thus may affect spectral properties of individual features. This is Landsat 8, so the sensors aboard are OLI and tiers. You can order a scene with just OLI data. We have both here. Map projection for this scene is UTM. We're also provided the zone and datum and ellipsoid. Note the difference in grid cell sizes. Refer to previous chapters in your text for information on cell size for raster data and differing cell sizes for each Landsat band. Farther down, we see latitude and longitude in degrees, minutes, and decimal seconds for the different corners of the scene, for example, upper left or lower right. Notice the last of the latitude and longitude coordinates has the abbreviation DEC, or DEC. This is the latitude and longitude in decimal degrees with positive and negative values for direction. 
but we don't have to return to Earth Explorer every time we want to view metadata. By default, the metadata file is always included with each image. When the image was unzipped, 14 individual files are revealed. The file names all contain the LPI, and most of these files are in TIFF format, which are the image files available for analysis. But there are also two text documents, which contain metadata. Right-click on the file name of the text document. Click Open, and it automatically opens using Notepad or something similar. This file is pretty difficult to read in Notepad. But we can also open it in Excel or any spreadsheet program where it can be viewed more clearly. Using Excel, open a blank workbook, click on the Data tab, then click on Get Data from Text. Navigate to your folder that contains the unzipped Landsat files and select the text file with ANG at the end of the file name. Click on Import. You can see here the results are much easier to read in Excel. This file contains additional metadata elements that are not included in Earth Explorer. For example, the number of bands and the, number, and the band numbers. And scrolling down, you can see much of this information is related to the image processing already completed by the USGS. Now let's import the second text document. This file contains exactly the same metadata we viewed in Earth Explorer. You can save the Excel workbook so the import will not need to be redone. So what else was provided in the download? The characters at the end of the product identifier for the TIFF files are B1, B2, B3 through B11. These are the individual band numbers and the images used for analysis. Remember from Chapter 10, each band number represents a different portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Now we have the information we need about this scene. In the next chapter, we will begin preparing this Landsat 8 scene for analysis.